Hello and welcome to Chicaname. My name is Lauren and today I'm looking at another suggestion from Aluminum Brain on Patreon. This is The Six Great Gods Overlord Lore by the channel creator Shell Tears Servants. We're apparently going to learn about the six great gods and the slain theocracy and all sorts of fun stuff in this video. Um, so thanks Aluminum for uh, suggesting this. I also want to give a quick shout out to Geth Captain um, and thanks also to Einzel Gone for being patrons over there on Patreon. Um, if you do want to become a patron, you can see our um, the, our anime videos out early and uncut, uh, totally unedited over there. Um, and, you know, you get to see videos like this out first. Like, I think I've got, like, sometimes m several weeks prior before they end up on the YouTube channel. So early content, some extra stuff, uh, and unedited things as well. So thank you so much for our patrons. Um, thanks for supporting the channel. If you can't support us financially right now, we do understand it's tough times, but it does help to leave a like, to uh, subscribe, and to comment on the channel. All three of those things help as well. Now, without further ado, Let's learn about the six great gods. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Hello. channel. Today, we'll be Thanks. taking a look at the six great gods, starting by looking at the group overall and then moving on to some individual members. The six great gods were a group of players from Yggdrasil, much like Nazarek, only they arrived 600 years before. Being the first known players to arrive in the new world, the world was very different when they arrived compared to now. The ruling force of the land were the true dragon lords who commanded wild magic as no one had access okay. to tiered magic at the time. It is also believed that it was the platinum dragon lord's father, the dragon emperor, who is responsible for causing players to appear in the new world. Oh, interesting. The reason interesting. he summoned them is out of greed for more power. During the rule of the Dragon Lord, humans okay. were on the brink of extinction. This is because without the tiered magic and infrastructure they now have access to, they lack the ability to adequately defend themselves from monsters. Naturally, as the players themselves were originally human, they sought to help the humans of the new world. With the strength of the six great gods, over time the humans were able to repopulate and the six great gods built the slain theocracy as refuge. Unfortunately, hmm. five of the six great gods' player characters were human, so they ended up dying out of old age, leaving only one member with an undead avatar alive to reign over and protect the humans. That okay, said, that was the... two is now deceased. The new world... Sonish or something, like, right? It was like a, ooh, the death god or whatever. I remember learning about that in another video, but I've forgotten their name. It started with an S, I believe. Sasha? <laughs> Something. I don't know. It's not... Slana? No. There was an S. There was a sh sound in there. Does also remained without tier magic until approximately 100 years after the appearance of the Great Gods, or 500 years before Ainz. It is also around this time that the eight Greed Kings appeared and used a world item to change the magic systems of the world. Right, which okay, not only the Greed Kings. Tier magic the default magic type for all races, but also greatly weakened wild magic and the true Dragon Lord's power. Mm -hmm. The world item they used is most likely either Ouroboros or Five Elements Overcoming. Unlike the eight I Greed think the uh, last time I watched a video about this, the suggestion was that they used Five ele Elements Overcoming, is what the belief is. Is what it it seems most people seem to believe they used to order to create the uh, the tier magic system, and I still think that it's possible because like the other uh, video talked about like the dwarves and the rune magic was also really popular and like really, but like I think if you're going to remove the wild magic, the rune magic also went downhill then as well. But no one has ever, no one else has mentioned that, and I don't know enough about the lore to be like it's a theory. So. Kings and Ainz, the six great gods arrived in the new world without their guild base, which is likely why they saw the need to build the theocracy and not just use their. Oh, okay, that makes the sense. The six great gods are far weaker than Nazarek and most likely weaker than the Greek. Kings, oh, really? They may not have had a guild base to begin with. What they did spawn in the new world with, alongside their equipment, is the world item, the downfall of castle and country. This world item has the ability of mind control Yikes. and is the same world item we saw Lady Kyrie use against Shouter. The Great Gods also oh. have a large variety of seeding crystals like the one we see the Captain of the Sunlight Scripture use against Ainz. As nice and memento the world items are, the biggest gift the Great Gods left behind are their children. The go okay, okay, so that explains why the Slain Theocracy had those things. Interesting that they hadn't been used yet. And also, these two characters, I, I didn't we see them briefly and then, like, never again? I, I feel like there was, like, a couple of characters that were introduced early on 
by the slain theocracy, but then we never saw them again. But now I'm like, maybe I'm misremembering that. Okay. The Godkin are stronger than most humans, although it is only the true Godkin that are stronger than most beings in the New World. True Godkin are the ones that manage to awaken the power of the gods within them, and this is presumably achieved through intense and harsh training. We only okay. know of three awakened Godkins, those being the first seat of the Black Scripture, Zeshi, and Zeshi's mum, Thane. For comparison, the realm of heroes for normal humans is post-level 30, while Zeshi sits at level 88. Wow, okay. Because, like, we know Ainz is at 100, right? But someone at level 88 might actually stand a chance against some of the other, uh, uh other, um, like, the Guardians, yeah? Like, maybe. Like, because someone who's of lower level can beat someone who's of higher level with, like, proper preparation, you know? It's sort of like, would, would Batman beat Superman? And the answer is, if he has time to prepare, yes, even though Superman would be at, like, a level 100 and Batman would be at a level, like, 10 because <laughs> he's, he's just a dude with good training but like that's in okay okay with the equipment the players owned are now in possession of the slain theocracy as it has been handed down through generations usually still don't know what happened to those godkin people though because i don't i do not remember uh if because like, i remember getting introduced to them but i don't remember what happened to them be falling into the hands of the true godkin or black scripture some items are treated as national treasures. Oh, hey, Bochi! What's up? Falling into the hands of the true Godkin or Black Scripture. Some items are treated as national treasures and sacred artifacts, so there may be more equipment that we don't see used. As for the individual gods, we have Fair. the gods of fire, water, earth... I love the Bochi, the rock, right? Like, that was so weird. <laughs> <laughs> and wind who use the same types of magic as their name implies. They each have the associated colours of red, blue, green and brown respectively. As for okay. the other two, we have a god of life with a light elemental affinity and a god of death with an affinity of darkness. Their colour associations Shocking. are white and black respectively. We don't know the name of the gods of fire, water and earth but we do know that of the other three. The one we know least about is Allah Alaf, the god of life. All we know about him is he was weaker than the god of death, Sashana. And speaking of Sashana... Shoshana! That's it. I knew there was a sh sound in there. Let's take a look at him. Sashana is the strongest of the six great gods and the one who outlived the other five. In the web novel, he was described as essentially a skeleton who wore a jet black robe and held a sparkling staff in his hand. The web okay. novel also describes Sashana as being seen as an evil god with wicked subordinates. From these two facts alone, we can start to see the similarities between Sashana and Ainz. And in fact, mm -hmm. in the past, the fifth seat of the Black Scripture has mistaken the two. Despite this, the Theocracy describes Sashana as a god who wouldn't freely spread vice. In terms of Sashana's build, we know he has five levels in Overlord and five levels in Eclipse, making him incredibly similar to Ainz again. We only okay. know about these levels in Overlord and Eclipse because Zeshi has access to the goal of all life is death through her talent that copies another person's trump card. This means that Sashana must have That's a good the talent. The goal of all life is death, and therefore the ten levels in Overlord and Eclipse which are prerequisites to attain the skill. By the same wow. logic, we know Sashana would have to be level 95 to gain access to the Eclipse class and would require a further five levels to max it out, making him a level 100 um, okay. player. As for cool. his equipment, he has the unnamed staff that we mentioned earlier and a war scythe called Sharon's Guidance. Sharon's Guidance is the same weapon that was passed down to Zeshi and grants her access to the goal of all life is death by wielding it. But these are not the only things Sharon Guidance can do, so let's look at the weapon itself. The scythe okay. allows the possessor to cast various spells. The overall cast limit for these spells are 5 every 4 hours, although some individual spells have their own cooldowns. The That's not bad! Like, that's really not bad at all, especially, like, I mean, again, most of my experience with, uh, t like, with uh, spells and cooldown stuff is watching other people use them in D&D, because I have not had a build that uses magic um, in that particular game. Um, but I do know there's a lot of spells that it's like, it'll take a, you know, you, you using five spells also takes a lot out of um, most, you know, especially newer players. Like, you have to be more skilled to use that many spells at all except for like cantrips but like and like well, cooldowns of an hour isn't bad at all a lot of the times it's like a day in dnt you have to sleep on it to get them back undead flame which surrounds the target in mystical flames of negative energy which then engulf the enemy when the flames make contact 
Undead avoidance protects the wielder from unintelligent undead while disease causes illness. Sleep to the undead triggers a chance to destroy an undead without turn resistance in a single hit and Evil Eye lets the user select an ability from the different gaze effects. In a similar vein, Death Mask protects the caster from gaze attacks while strengthening the feat effect caused by the user. Additionally, the third tier spell Create Undead allows the user to summon low level undead. And finally, we have the eighth tier Insta Death spell, Death. This one has a unique cooldown of two uses every eight hours. Spells aside, that's side still a lot. Good God! You can also summon up to thirty spear-wielding skeletons called Sparshate every twenty-four hours, with only five being allowed simultaneously. As mentioned earlier, despite being unable to die of old age, he has now passed. This happened after the eight Greek kings had arrived and caused so much disruption that it was decided something had to be done about them. Sashana fought on the side of the dragon lords to put a stop to them and perished at their hand. Although Sashana himself may no longer exist, his legacy lives on in the form of the job class called Adept of Sashana. This class has a limited number of uses per day, and by using it, the user can extend the effective time of spells by consuming more mana. Naturally, this means the ability cannot be activated if the user is out of mana. An example of a spell that can be extended with this class is Fly. The only known character to have this class is the Vice Captain of the Holocaust Scripture, Shoan. The final member of the six great gods is the god of wind, Kiko Tenshin Nekonyan. What is interesting about this god is That's we quite know a name. more about him from the Isekai Quartet movie than Overlord himself. <laughs> With the Quartet movie came an alternative timeline, so we'll go over the canon timeline first before looking at the more in-depth Quartet timeline. In okay. The main... Also, that's adorable. I love those art. That art. <laughs> that's so cute. Oh, you fed everybody the. Online, little is known about his personality, although he would have arrived in the New World with the other members of the Six Great Gods. During Nekonyan's time in the New World, he amassed a large harem and had many children. Eventually, he passed away and his armor was passed down to Zeshi alongside Sashana's war scythe. Okay. On the cover for the 16th Light Novel, we see a character wearing the same armor as Nekonyan's, and he was originally meant to make an appearance in the Overlord movie, but he was cut. Nekonyan's symbol also Bummer. fittingly resembles the silhouette of a cat's head. Now moving on to an alternative timeline where spoilers will be minimal and insignificant. But if you wish to avoid any at all, please feel free to skip ahead. All right, skip ahead if you want to avoid spoilers. About to fight the primordial dragon lord with his siege golem. Just as they are about to fight, Nekonyan and his golem are transferred to the new world that the movie is set in. During Nekonyan's time in the movie world, he comes across the head researcher who made a few appearances in Konosuba. During their time together, they make various golems. One of their earlier Ooh. creations was based on the Siege Golem and was a Godzilla variant golem that ended up going rogue. In order to stop this rogue golem, they ended up creating another golem called Pantagruel by combining various techniques from the worlds of Overlord and Konosuba. Nekonyan and Pantagruel together managed to take down the golem and then moved on to working on constructing a fortress to store the various golems. Eventually, the head researcher found a way back to the world of Konosuba so he could continue his chaotic antics there, and Nekonyan eventually passed away. This left Pantagruel alone for the next 300 years, which is where I believe the movie's events begin. This means Nekonyan does not make an appearance in the movie, but his journal was kept by Pantagruel. Moving away from the timelines, we're going to look at Nekonyan's classes. All we know okay. is that he has access to the Paladin class. We don't know much about his equipment either, just that he has his armor, a large sword, and a shield. And that wraps up pretty much everything. So let okay. me know your thoughts down cool. below. Let me know if you're a fan of Isekai Quartet and if you enjoyed the movie. If you enjoyed, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated as it really helps out the channel. Our Discord server is linked in the description down below, so please feel free to join that. And thank you very much to QMystic for another Bochi incredible again. thumbnail. Their channel will also be linked in the description. With all that said, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day. Okay, great. That was interesting. Okay, so like that video is going to be linked in the description below. Um, if you want to find his Discord or like look at more of their stuff. Um, I mean, I'm going to leave a little like on the channel because I would like to, especially if I'm very interested in the topic. And that was fascinating. I do, okay, remind me, please. I'm so sorry, I've completely forgotten. What happened to those Godkin people? Did Did they die? Did they get defeated? Or were they just introduced as like a suggestion and we'll see them again later? Because I remember meeting them, but I do not remember anything else that happened <laughs> at all. So 
remind me, please. Um, and again, thank you for suggesting this aluminum brain. Um, any other suggestions? Go ahead and let me know on Patreon. Um, and don't forget again. Don't forget to like and comment, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You'll see more stuff like this. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.